Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna talk to the composition of model of the art inflation and attention. My name is Alejandro Sanchez. Um, this is the agenda. Well, first we we need to know what what is attention. Well, attention is a process of selectively, actively, and economically striking on information. That means that attention always is selecting the stimulus in the environment and selecting what is important for the objective in that moment. In an economically way, it means that it is using the less uh, amount of energy. And uh, well, in the research of attention, we, we have a lot of taxonomies. In this case, we use the taxonomy proposed by Michael Posner that differentiates at least three main attention system that is alerting, executing, orienting, and executing control. In that image, we can see uh, the brain and some areas that is involved in the functions. Um, well, alerting basically maintains an internal state in preparation for events where it is tough that indicates when to, pay that, when to pay attention and modulates the level of vigilance. The orienting selectively targets one or a few items from numerous stimuli and amplifies its object of interest. And um, finally, it's a key control that decides, decides how to process the information we attend to, uh, selects the process that are appropriate for a given task and controls their execution. In this work, we, we, used, we, we work with, with our art team, but what exactly is the problem? Well, without an air team modulation, a system will all, all times consume the same amount of energy for any given situation. That means that it doesn't matter if the cognitive architecture do a complex task with a lot of stimulus in the environment or uh, as easy tasks in a controlled environment, the system or the, or the cognitive architecture uses the same amount of energy in almost all the case. So that is the problem. Our objective with this work is identify the processes and brain areas that, are, that have an impact on alertness, design a neuroscience based schematic model of the additional processes of our awareness, develop a bi-inspired computational model of the other function, and finally validate the performance of the model by comparing it with the response in humans. Well, in the state of the art, we, we view a lot of architectures like HDR, Arcadia, but the only architecture that do a little bit the same like alerting is LIDA. LIDA helps have alarms. Uh, an alarm situation is when, when an agent selects and executes an action to respond to a dangerous situation before aware of the situation. So that means that if you have a, a situation, a dangerous situation, the LIDA do a free pass to do an action, but it, it this, uh, this system, this alarm, no. No model is other, other cognitive functions to, to this alarm, just do an action. And in the, in the conclusion, we live in all, all of these architectures, the attention most, is mostly approached as a way of cultural and relevant information in order to carry out a response or a learning. And um, that no environment dependent or time sustaining alert or activation state is used in these models. In biological evidence, we can see that the ascending reticular activating system controls alertness and arousal through the functioning of multiple neurotransmitters. In the image, we can see uh, some areas that, that are involved in this process of control alertness. And these this are us. And distribute non specific sensory inputs to various areas of the brain, alerting and preparing the cerebral cortex to process 
specification will do at the same environment. Um, well, the RS function on the ascending reticular activation system uh, have two, two main functions that is activation and innovation. The activation is is due by some neurotransmitter like orexin, dopamine, serotonin, etc. And the innovation is the same as some neurotransmitters like a variety that are produced in the BOPO. Um, and this neurotransmitter model is this, this functional layer or this lever, the level of BOMs in the system. Uh, for our cognitive model, we use these areas. In, in this slide, we can see the, the whole system and all the areas involved in this process. And we can see up to the neurotransmitters involved, like acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, orexin, and GABA. In this model, also, we can see the, the, the connections, the connection with uh, like activation, innovation, and the auto cortex. But before that, explain this connection, we need to know how, how components or these areas function inside the model. Well, each area will be related with respect to the intensity of excitatory or inhibitory inputs and their weighted weights. That means, for example, in, in this image, that locus aureus sounds to the tuberomamillary tubular tubular nucleus um, activate, um, an activate signal. That signals have a wave and is received by the tuberomamillary nucleus. And the tuberomamillary tubular nucleus sounds an innovation signal to the locus aureus. This is just an example. And the mathematical equation is the energy of the level of alertness of this area is equal to the majority of the, the energy of this area multiplied by your weight. And the question is, why we do that? Why do this simplification? Well, the literature, the, the literature does not have enough data on each neurotransmitter like production, consumption, and um, their interaction with other, other areas to make a more complex model. Um, well, follow with the, with the model we have in this slide, the, the activation connections. There are two main branches, like this, the first, the ascending pathway to the thalamus that activates the thalamic relay neurons. And the second branch activate the neurons in the LHA area, the for brain, and the entire cerebral cortex. In the image of brain, we can see the same, but in, in brain function. And in inhibition, we have two main areas that inhibit the system. That is the ventrolateral preoptical nucleus and the portofascial zone. These areas regulate the alertness and promote the sleep. And finally, we have the output to cortex. That, that signals is where other cognitive functions can take the other signal and adapt the processing of stimuli. An example, I, I don't know if the motivation, the motivation function needs to know what level of alertness is the system in that moment can take the signal in this, in this area in the preferred cortex and adapt your behavior like the objectives in that moment. Uh, in our model, we have two inputs. The first is the circadian rhythm. There is a rhythm that models our video one. That rhythm is modulated in, in, our, in, in the humans by neurotransmitters, by the light of the environment, and some other things. So for this, this model, we, we use a simplification. We use do a signal, a sinusoidal signal. Um, and the second input is the, the senses, like hearing, like smell, taste, etc. The senses uh, are processed by processed by thalamus. Um, in our case of study, we do an integration with the auditory system to tell the model. First, we, we have an auditory stimulus that is processed by the auditory system. 
this auditory system processes the signal are, are your properties and send the signal to a model called signal processing that compares that signal with this with the signal that this system with the signal that before we we hear in your memory system. Our memory system have two two types of memory, like it is average memory and lost memory. This signal processing compares that two signals and send a new signal to the other system. This is for do an arbitration in the system and send uh, and the other system finally send the outputs to a level of the real alertness. For validate our model, we do an experiment inside the Oswald paradigm that consists in two stimulus. This one is the standard stimulus that takes 80% of the time of the set, and the Oswald stimulus that takes 20% of the time of the set. For example, if we, we have a, a set of 10 seconds, we do 80% stimulus of standard and 20 the Oswald. And we did that because each of the output sounds appears, the human brain uh, have a signal that is called P300 that appears 300 to 500 minutes after, milliseconds after the, this is output stimulus. In order to obtain the human data, the human data, we use an emotive depth of clues to measure the signal in the human brain. The motive we can see in the image, this is a uh, EGG electroencephalogram, and measure brain waves in frontal areas like AF3, F7, F3, F5, etc. We can see the areas in the in the upper level. Um, well, what is the results? Once obtained the human data, we we do a three sets. We change three parameters, uh, three, three parameters of proper, properties of sound. That is, we change the frequency, we change the amplitude, and we change the time. That is, in, in our stimulus, the, the standard and the output, we change these, these properties. We do this, this set, the same experiment for each subject and obtain this, this, this data. So in order to compare this data, we use a similar, uh, um, thing that, that is called similarity matrix. And the first step is compare with the subject one, the frequency, the data about your frequency versus your frequency. Your frequency versus your amplitude, frequency versus time, amplitude versus frequency, and so on. And in this case, yellow means that it's the same signal or more uh, really similar, and zero is totally different. And um, before that, after that, we convert that matrix into a vector. So we have a vector with the comparatives because the in the subject one. And we do the same for all subjects, the, the subject one, the vector of subject one, the vector of subject two, and the same for others. And finally, we obtain the similarity matrix. This this matrix is really important because we can see the, similar, the similarity because, uh, between humans. Mm, why? Well, if the, we can see that it's a little bit similar in, in the major of cases. If that not, if the results are different, if the, if the if the behavior of each human was different to others, we cannot do a model of that because if, if this, this behavior have not similarity between each one. So in the row 414, we can see the noise. The noise is totally different to the, to the human. And in the sixth subject, uh, well, uh, we think that is just noise or a problem with the, with the model. Well, with the model, we, we do the same. We, yes, yeah, we do the same experiment with the same change of frequency, amplitude, and time, and take the, the data about a configuration one, configuration two, and etc. This configuration uh, change the memory 
our fifth configuration was with the memory average and the order with the memory with the memory loss. And we change the uh, the the level of the circadian rhythm and do the same the vectors and finally do the similarity metrics but this time with human versus humans model versus models and in the red square we can see the comparison between humans and models we can see that the sphere first that is the uh, memory loss is are more similar with the humans that the model with the average memory. Uh, well, that is important because our model seems to work. Um, in conclusion, in conclusion, we can say that the model present can behave in a similar way like human error. Also, we can see that the model has a better performance with less memory than with average memory. Um, for future work, we we need to, to add the functionalities of the different neurotransmitters to obtain more specific functionalities with each component and with other, with other cognitive functions and do the, uh, the perform other integration with other cognitive functions such as vision, motivation, memory, uh, et cetera. That is all, um, thank you. Questions? Uh, people that study attention, usually they uh, split the problem of attention into two modalities. That is bottom-up attention and top-down attention. And uh, your model seems to be uh, quite interesting for modeling bottom-up attention, this uh, idea of alertness and, and, and alarms and things like that. I was wondering if you think that your model could also be used for, for top-down attention, and if not, what could you uh, uh, put on, 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 on top of it such that it can uh, cope with uh, top-down attention? Okay, well, we think that the model we can use with top-down and the bottom-up. Why? Because these models are connected with, with our cognitive function and with the other two uh, attentional networks, like this orienting and like this uh, exec executive control. So in order of that, uh, the, this alerting system receives all the information, uh, I don't know, for an app, it's the top down, and, and modulates the RNS in, in in that way, that is inputs of the cognitive system or of the other properties of alertness of, alert, of attention and do the, the process and finally takes a other level of alertness. Any other question from the audience or uh, from the Zoom room? Well, I have a question. Uh, I don't. I don't know uh, if you meant to say that uh, the model uh, is better or has more alertness with the memory lost memory. than with the uh, average memory. Memory loss. You mean meaning that he can recall, or uh, do you have? data that uh, you made some damage to the memory uh, modules what are you what are you saying with memory loss okay well the memory loss basically in in the model when receive a signal a sound signal in this case we we start to losing the information in, in time so remember, yes, but just a little bit is forgetting almost all. And the average memory uh, will do the average between all and remember in, in that way. And finally obtain a, a, a signal that, that, that memory. And how do you explain that difference in the attention? Why in one case 
So what is better? Why is better? Yeah. Why is better? Uh, really, I don't know why is better in real life. Uh, these results indicate that it's better, but I don't know why really. For example, in humans, sounds sounds weird that losing memory to better performance with our attention. So I don't know why in in that model is better. Thank you. If there is no more questions, we proceed with the next talk. Thank you. Thanks.